Good day. Welcome to Battleship Cove in the USS Massachusetts, our Inside History Edition. Today, we're going to be bringing you through the 5 inch gun mount and the magazines that supply the ammunition. My name is Tom Lowney, gunner's mate, first class retired US Navy, battleship sailor, and volunteer on board ship here. Today, we're starting out on the 5 inch gun system inside the lower magazines. These are your deep storage magazines. The magazines contain semi-fixed ammunition, which means your projectile and your powder can are separate. The powder is packed in, in the cans and stored here in two separate magazines. The US Navy doesn't store both powder and projectiles together. You have two different types of ammunition. The propellant and then your high explosives. It's not good to store things that way. Not a good idea. In all up rounds and small quantities, that is tolerated. But in these magazines, we separate the explosive weight in the powder magazines over here and then the projectiles here in this magazine. What you're looking at surrounding me are these, what are called dredge hoists. These bring up the ammunition to the ready service rooms, the, lower ma uh, the upper magazines to the five inch mounts. And this magazine serves two gun mounts. This would be mount one and mount three. These serving mount one, forward being this way, half this way, so it'd be number three. Now, why not one and two? In the Navy, we number magazines, doors, spaces, not left and right, but port and starboard. Port side being this way, that would be your even numbers, starboard being your odd numbers. So one and three, being sequential mounts in a row, this would serve those two magazines. The South Dakota class is a conden is con condensed design. So magazine space was a premium. So if you could, you'd try to save weight and space. So you combined, since they're the same gun systems, you condense the hoist and the magazines together to serve two mounts instead of a single mount. So as you have here to get the ammunition up from the lower decks to the upper decks in this deep magazine, you have what are called dredge hoists. Now, one would be used for your projectile, and then one would be used for your powder. You could use either or the hoist almost identical in uh, prospect of bringing up either powder cans or projectiles. But seeing how your, your projectiles are stored on this side, You'd most likely use this one unless you had a casualty and you had to rely on one to take both. Can't happen, but tend to keep up things running good condition. So your projectiles would be here, your powder would be here. Your powder magazine over there. Because when you have all the people in the magazine here moving around and loading ammunition, the thing you have to remember is the five inch 38 is manually loaded in the gun mount. So you have 22 people inside that mount alone, and then you have people down here feeding that. And you're firing at roughly 22 rounds a minute. So you have to be humping. So these hoists are running, cycling up ammunition. So your projectiles are in bins, as you see here, these aluminum bins and the brackets that hold the ammunition are called battens. So these battens are set up so that when you take out the ammunition, your projectile, you're taking them out from top to bottom. So that way the stack is lowered evenly because the ship's moving. You don't want to slosh ammunition around or things rolling. So you start from the top, work your way down. The bins are usually designated and marked for what type of ammunition because you have multiple types. You have armor piercing, AA common, which is anti-aircraft. You have point detonating. Uh, you have star shells. And those are put in racks all their own. That star shell is an aluminum, illuminating round that is uh, white phosphorus, basically. I, I don't know. The flare, the white phosphorus is another setup. Multiple types of ammunition. We can get into that in another time and we'll look at some of the different types. But right here, we're concerned is the dredge hoist, lower storage, and getting them up above to the gun mounts. So, we also have electric motors, charging hydraulics to move 
the hoist up. It's, it's a, basically a track. If you look inside the hoist here, to my left, you'll see a projectile sitting in that. That's a 5 inch 38 BLMP, what we call blind loaded and plug projectile. That projectile is used for training firing, live firing. It doesn't have an explosive weight, but it's weighed and balanced just like a regular 5 inch projectile. You'd use that for target and training shooting. So it's, an, it's basically an inert round, just packed with sand inside the projectile base doesn't explode target practice but it gives you the idea on how the hoist is set up now these tracks flexible links go up as this hoist goes up it doesn't go in a straight line it's got flexible links and powels on it to hold the canisters and the projectiles in series so it goes right on up comes back down inside cycles back up around just like an escalator same thing but for ammunition dredge hoist. On this, as you can see, our projectiles and our powder cans are set up to show you the type of ammunition and how it looks. Now, right here is your projectile. This projectile is a 5 inch training projectile. It's painted with gold. It has no rotating band. So this would be used for training purposes. Because a rotating band is definitely uh, an important thing for firing through the gun. So you see it on the BLMP round. That allows, it, it's made of brass so that way uh, it is cut by the rifling which gives the projectile its spin. So you want to protect that. So if you're using one for training, you're not firing it out. You're just using it for loading training. There's no band here. This one's 54 pounds. The full up round is roughly about 55 pounds. It can be fused. It can be Armor piercing, which you would have a base that fuse or a nose fuse. This one, training, it's just a, a, a cast. Right here is what you see as a canister. This is a emptied five inch canister. It's not been fired. As you can see, it's not dented, discolored. It has been cleaned out for illustrating purposes. There'd be a cork plug in here that would keep your powder. Now the powder can weighs about 30 pounds and that's smokeless powder. That's your propellant. It doesn't explode, it burns. It provides a even pressure all the way through as it burns in milliseconds, forcing pressure behind the projectile, forcing it out the gun. As it's being cut by the rifling, it spins it, adds to the accuracy, sends it out to the target. Now, we'll get into range and capabilities of the five inch gun inside the gun valve. Right now, we're, we're concentrating on the magazine system down here. The can has a fuse, as a, excuse me, a tube. When the primer is fired in the back of the can, you'll see a primer hole. That is struck by the firing pin it's either fired electrically or by percussion. Now, when it fires, it sends out a charge through this tube you see coming up through, and it has holes in it. This allows for ignition instantly from the cartridge evenly through the holes so it burns and the pressure builds up. Part of the design. Once the candidate is fired, it comes out, it's ejected out on deck. Now, what you have here is a trainer. This goes along with the projectile. It's got a rubber base. It's wood. It's, used, it's the same weight. And it's used in our loading training machine up on deck. Now, when the ammunition is set from here, you'd be at battle stations. Everything would be closed up. These ports, as you can see here and here, go into the powder magazine. That's where your powder comes out of. All right. Those usually, this door is kept closed because you don't want any sparks igniting powder because these are also charged, pressurized. You want to keep everything segregated, chances of spark, you don't want any of that. So that is kept because now you're banging around projectiles in here, it's steel. You don't want to take any chances, minimize them. Now, the cans come out from the magazine 
you don't open the can up down here. Can comes out, pass through, it's shoved in and sent out. When it gets up to the gun mount, what happens is as it comes out of the hoist, they open it, they dump the can out, there's a sheet inside the upper handling magazine, it's dropped down through into the space below it to make room because it's become a trip hazard. And then you'll see later on inside the upper magazine how that is taken from the dredge hoist and put into the lower part of the gun. So this is what goes up inside this one. The projectile should actually be in that one because the bins over on this side of the magazine, that's what would hold all your ammunition projectiles. Powder. Keep it separated, keep it simple, because as you take out the ammunition, someone puts it in the hoist, they send it up, it has to come back here. So you have to, again, just like the 16 inch gun, you have to work in a cycle to stay out of the way. So you put here, probably come around, go back, take another one and go. So you're cycling your way through, because you remember, you're firing 22 rounds a minute up to and being shot at or planes coming in in battle is a definite motivator gets you moving faster but you can tire and you try to rotate people around as best you can because you don't know how long you're going to be firing the capacity in this magazine each magazine is slightly different so it varies you have at least a couple of thousand rounds in here and you always have a little bit more powder than you do projectiles because unfortunately if you do have a misfire your projectile is already rammed in. You just change the can out, put a can in. So you'd have probably about 10% more powder than you would projectiles, just in case. So we've covered dredge hoist, projectiles, storage, and the bins, and the powder magazine. We're going to take a look inside the powder magazine so you can see how that's stacked. All right. Welcome back. Lower magazines. This is the powder magazine, as you can see. Not well lighted right now, but this is a part you wouldn't see anyway. What you'd see would be displayed on the other side via the hatch. As you look at this magazine, the powder magazine is set up to store a max amount of canisters. As, as we have here, we have a mix of cans. Now uh, they're stacked and set up in these areas, the bins and the racks. That way they interlock and set up so that way they, when the ship moves, the rack shouldn't move. So these battens are set in strategic points to hold the rack up. And when you take these cans out, you're gonna be taking them out that way. So you'd be working from that side of the magazine in depth in here. Now for the five inch, the whole can comes out, not like the 16 inch where you have to pull the powder bags out of the cans. In here, the whole can goes up, sent up, the upper magazine takes them out, sends them out. So this magazine depletes as you go in. Uh, so every space is taken here. You cannot access the back of the magazine. But two, you have to keep in mind, this is an operating ship. Below us are the engine rooms. So you have a lot of heat being generated down there. So to keep these magazines cool, you have chilled water being pumped in. Now you can see the coils above us here. That's the chill water coming in, flowing through basically radiators and you have drip pans. So these drip pans sweat because of the heat. So that water catches in these troughs, comes out through the plumbing, comes out to a drip bucket out in the front. So that way when you come through, Every day when you do magazine temps to check the magazine's integrity, you're doing an inspection, you'd have to dump the, the cans because condensate will build up in here. It doesn't directly pour out because you don't want a flow of water that could be reversed the other way if the other compartment was damaged. So the drip bucket also gives you an idea how to how the temperature is going in the magazine and how much of a problem you may or may not have with temperature control, plus taking the temps in here. So that's part of the cooling. In here you also have um, alarms set up with pressure switches with fusible links 
That way, in case it does get too hot in here where it's dangerous to the ammunition, a fuse link, a bellow fuse link would break, send the pressure to an alarm, and they'd be able to flood the magazine if they had to, if there was a danger of a fire going, because you get over 120 degrees, it becomes unstable. So there are precautions designed into, into the magazine to help prevent such <laughs> combustible accidents, as we can say. It's all part of keeping tabs on your ammunition. That's why a gunner's mate's job is, is continuous. We have to go through, do temps, inspect the magazines, check record ammunition, uh, come in here, do maintenance on the alarms and the coils, make sure that there's no problem. Different maintenance checks. Job that never ends. This is our magazine. All right, we've covered pretty much the good size of the magazine. We've got powder magazine, the shells, the hoist, and behind me, we have our bins. The bins, as you can see on the deck, actually extended out to here. But in order to get people in and out and safely, we removed some of the bin area so you get a good view of the magazine. So you kind of get an idea on how much was in here. So our bins were normally be set and numbered and identified for what they had in them. And we'll cover the types of ammunition a little bit later. But for now, this is our lower magazines. Thank you for your time. I'd like to remind people to like, share, or subscribe to Battleship Cove and in the history. And if you want to look into helping out restore these spaces, work on board, please check the boxes below. Give us a call or text us. Let us know what you think and what you'd like to uh, do if you want to volunteer. Always looking for help. Thanks for your time. And we'll continue this at our other parts of the ship, the upper magazines and the gun mounts in following videos. Thank you for your time. Have a good day.